Good, um, good morning, J First Baptist Church. This is a Tuesday broadcast, and uh, this is not a scheduled one, but I just felt I needed to just share a few uh, I, uh, thoughts about things that have been happening in the Christian world lately. Um, it, it uh, part of it is connected to the coronavirus. Some is not. Some is just connected to de uh, a deceiving, uh, a deceiving individual. But I just want to share a few thoughts because I was in a meeting yesterday with the association and one of my colleagues mentioned uh, one of these individuals that I'd like to clarify what really is happening in this individual's life because I've experienced this in the past in my ministry dealing with the group that he's part of. And I just wanted to just take some time, share a few thoughts with you because Fellow Christians, especially those of you that are that are in my congregation, I am very, very, it, to me it is very important for you to get reality and truth. And even though it might not be a popular statement, it might not be even a popular idea, um, truth is truth. And I want you to have that truth because, because fellow Christians, we live in a day and age that's very, very confusing. Uh, we are warned in the book of Jude that people are going to creep in unawares and they have. There are people that seem to be nice, that have great errors in their theology. Some some have moderate errors. So some have a little bit of errors. I think we all can say we we tweak things as we read them too. But I I'm one that I try to be as biblical as I can be. I believe my and and taking the various spiritual gift tests, my main uh, spiritual gift is the gift of teaching, and. I think it's very important for your pastor to be able to share insight into what's going on around the country in various areas. And there are two stories, but before I get to them, I want to read you a little excerpt out of the Gospel of Mark. And this is dealing with what happened and, and how people tried to trick Christ. Um, you have uh, in verse... In verse uh, 13 of chapter 12, we read, And they send to him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. What was happening was Jesus had finished teaching, and the religious hierarchy, and those that uh, were government officials did not like it. They did not want to lose their power base. They did not see Jesus as the Messiah. Those who should have recognized him, the religious leaders of that day, if for the Jewish people, they missed him. And this is why many times Christ had contention with them. Not because he didn't love them, but because they criticized him. Because he did not meet their little, or, or he didn't fit into their little box of what, a, of what a Savior should be. They were considering the Messiah to come to just get rid of Rome and to establish the kingdom on earth. But there were two comings promised. One coming, of course, first coming, was the time when he would come to give himself so that we could have salvation and we could have our sins taken away. But that the second time when he comes, he will come as the great conqueror and he will come to, to basically destroy the, the worldly governments of this world and establish a kingdom. First, he will establish a kingdom on earth for a thousand years. Then he will... He will come. He he will he will make that thousand year kingdom. It will come to an end, and then we go into what's called the eternal kingdom of heaven. And I'm looking forward to those. But here at this time, in this first coming, the Pharisees and the Herodians are going to get together. The Herodians represent the government, of course, and the Pharisees re represent the uh, Judaism of that day. And when they had come, they say to him, Master, and this is directed to Christ, we know that you are true and care for no man. Right there, they are trying to stroke his ego. Um, I've had this happen in, in the past, and I know as a human being, it's nice to have your ego stroked. Well, in this case, this is Jesus. This is God in flesh. This isn't going to work. These people have another agenda on their mind. And in fact, one of the things I'm going to share with you a little bit for just a few moments but an individual who had another agenda with one of his statements. When they had come to him, Master, we know that you are true and care for no man, for you regard not the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to be 
to give tribute to Caesar or not? Now, this was one of those questions, and let me kind of let me kind of throw the background around this. Here you have your Jewish re religious leaders on one side. Then on the other side, you had the Herodians. They didn't get along. Yet these two enemies had a common enemy in their mindset. That was Jesus. So they came together. And for the Jewish side of it, for the Pharisees, if Jesus would have just acknowledged just a flat rate, yes, uh, give give your tribute or give your taxes to, to Caesar. They would have said, you are, uh, you are heretical and you are against and a traitor to our country, Israel, because Israel hated Rome and Israel did not want Rome there. But then on the other side, you had the Herodians who backed the Roman government and they served Herod at this time. And they served at, well, at this time it would, it, it would have been, um, not, not Herod, but it, but it was the Roman government. And basically, their, their position would have been, if you're telling people not to pay taxes, you are, you are inciting, um, uh, you're, you're inciting uh, people to be traitors against the Roman Empire. And you're, 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 you're inciting the possible even riots. And that would have been very bad. So either answer, if it was just a straight answer, answering the question, and I would have probably answered, uh, yeah, pay your taxes. But with the mindset that also give your tithe, you know, give your monies to God too, give to God. And here's how Jesus answers. Um, he says this, he says, shall we give or shall we not? He's asked, but he knowing their hypocrisy, see, he knew what their mind was. Why tempt you me? Bring me a penny or bring me a coin that I may see it. And they, you know, and we used to do this program at the Holy Land Experience every day, at least once. And I still remember this because right after this was done, many times I would come up or one of the other speakers would come up to the garden tomb. It was done out there. And we would then talk about giving to God and, and, and about Christ's work on this earth and how perfect it was. But Christ, you know, and in that case, they would flip a coin up to where Christ was standing, our, our, our actor who played Jesus. And here's what, here's what is said. And they thought it and they brought it. And he says to them, whose is the image and su superscription? Meaning what's written on the coin and whose image is on it? And they said to him, Caesar's. Of course it's Caesar's. It's a Roman coin. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Render or give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. They couldn't, they couldn't do anything. The Pharisees, they couldn't say, well, you're being wicked. You're being a traitor to Israel. The Herodians couldn't say, you're a traitor to Rome. No. He basically laid it out many times how we would think it. You know, when I pay my taxes, am I happy to pay taxes? Oh, probably not. I look at all of the world around us and our government, I'm thinking, I'm giving them so much money. And you know what, that's, uh, you know, that, but we do it. I'm not telling you, don't pay your taxes. I've, I've heard people over the years say, oh, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Well, guess what? You get th thrown into jail if you don't pay taxes. That's obeying the government. That's what Jesus here is saying himself. He says, give unto Caesar, what's, let's do Caesar. And in our political system in this go our government system on this world we, we give to caesar but this is given to god what's to god and that's very important that we can't neglect the things that god says now i i give this part this passage all to kind of look at a couple things going on at least one thing going on in our nation there has been a an uproar with a gentleman and you might have seen this he's actually been on the news media some his name is Dr. John MacArthur. He has a church, a very large church in, in, in uh, California. He also is a founder of, of a great ministry system that reaches out across the, across the known world. Um, it, there, he has missions all over third world countries. In fact, the mission I worked with, Maytha, uh, when I, before, well, right after I left there, John MacArthur, there was a gentleman who was still there and he was a very big follower of John MacArthur. It ended up John MacArthur's group took over that ministry. 
and they established a, a teaching center there to train pastors. But he's done this around the world. He's one of my favorite speakers on the radio, and, and I've watched him on YouTube videos. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just a great, great uh, scholar of the New Testament. He, he understands the Greek language very, very well. And he's been at this church for 50 years that he's at today. And I know, uh, and, and he's, he's been a great Christian leader around the world. Uh, and he's just solid. Well, recently in California, where they are saying to shut down, the government was saying to shut down till 2021, his church has, has decided to open its doors. And not only just open their doors, doing practicing all the different things for COVID, but they brought in their orchestra again. They have a choir, and they had a full, a full service, and many people did come. Now, before earlier on, they practiced the idea of we're just going to have online services. Now they do a lot. They did a lot like 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 what we practice, doing the online services. But at first, their position was, we don't know enough about this virus. We want to protect our people. And they, he would hold to the same, same mentality I have, is that my goal is to protect our congregation. Thus, we're going to abide by this and, and these laws. Well, here's what's happened in California. They, they have seen, they have t taken these tests that, that, the, um, that his, he, he himself and his elders have decided that that this is now government infringing on what God says to assemble together. It's not based on the the statistics do not prove there in California where he's at that if they if they continue not to have services through till 2021 that this is going to add any protection to his congregation. So they have elected to have church service. Now what I would say, I, I, I go with two things, because there are a lot of debates on this. Is he right? Is he wrong? There's a gentleman named Dr. Dever. He, he has a large church in, 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 um, in Washington, D.C., very solid Christian, um, and he's, he's done some great books. He holds a little bit more, though, to what's considered to be social gospel. And for just... And there's no reasoning behind it. He went after John MacArthur saying, oh, you can't do this. This is wrong. This is terrible. And John MacArthur has gotten some flack. But last Sunday they met. People did practice the with the masks in this. And they did do things. And they were, they were genuinely concerned about we want to keep it right. And they, they had a great service. And for that church at that time, because of... What was going on around them, they decided that they were going to follow God and not Caesar because, the, the, because Caesar has overstepped his bounds in the case of the government of California. I, I have different thoughts on this, but I wanted to just address this today because I know some of you might be looking at the YouTubes and looking at the Facebook and there are comments out there. I do not think that, that John MacArthur has done something wrong for his church in his area. I think we all have to make decisions as a church how we, how we carry on and go forward. In his area, there was not an uptick. There was actually a downtick. Now, there's other areas around California that have gone up quite a, quite a bit. A lot of it has been for these riots and other things like this. And, and I've heard a number of commentators, uh, conservative ones in that, have uh, the, the liberal ones tended to praise the governor of California. The conservative ones are basically saying they're doing some things and they're, they're, they're keeping people from doing things that really are not as dangerous as, as they make it out to be, like going to the beach and things like that. You know, that's a whole other issue. Uh, I'm not going to judge their, their governor. But I just want you to, to, to be reminded that if you're hearing a lot of negative things about John MacArthur, you might not even know that this even took place. And if you don't, okay, well, I'm just letting you know there are some tensions in the Christian world. And I just want you to be aware that Jesus said, give unto Caesar what's due Caesar, meaning do what you're supposed to do as a good citizen. But on the other hand, give unto God what's due God. Just don't be a good citizen and forget about the things of God. And don't 
think being a good citizen is your it, it takes care of all of your godly duties. No, it goes together. Because this church, J First Baptist, is not guided by the government. Now, yes, we I believe that, that we need to be good citizens, but we are not the government. Okay, and and I just want us to be a to, to just be aware. And you might you might say, well, this is something I don't even get involved in, and maybe you don't. There's 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 one other thing, and this is a warning from the spiritual realm. Um, I don't know who all of you watch regularly, and there's a lot of people on YouTube. You can see all sorts of people on YouTube's. But there's a guy that I that I had to deal with some of his stuff when I was at the Holy Land experience with TBN. His name is Todd White. And about two weeks ago, Todd White preached a sermon at his church, very large church, I believe is in Texas. And he has a school of prophets there in this. And you know, he, he's more of, of part of the Pentecostal group, uh, which I am not. And, but that's not the issues I'm having with, with Todd White. Todd White is a fake healer. He would go around and do do basically sleight of hand tricks with healing. He did not preach the gospel at all. It was, oh, you're good. God loves you. That's it. That's not what the gospel tells us. Well, he does this message and says, I have to repent. Now I'm a new Christian. Okay. Problem is, in past years, and I've seen many a times this happens, you take one of the individuals that I would consider are very unbiblical in their in their approach to quote church, very unbiblical, according to what you should do, according to what the Bible tells tells us, and we call them heretics. They do not bring the gospel, and God even warned us in the book of Jude that in the before the Lord returns, people are going to come in unawares and they're going to they're going to say some really things that are contradictory to the Bible and presented as the gospel. Well, this is one of the gentlemen who did it. And he worked with other individuals. Well, this past Sunday, he gave another sermon. And a lot of people haven't seen this sermon. I have. And, and this sermon, and I bring this up because yesterday at this meeting I was at, this person's name came up in a very, in a way, and I, and I don't, cast dispersions on him. I, I wish he will become a Christian. I don't, I don't know if he's a Christian. I can't see his heart. But the way he acts and what, what he says does not show me that he's a Christian. Because by his works, we're going to see this. James is a book on this. We don't earn our salvation through works, but we, are, we can be seen by the works we do as a Christian or not. And he is, and, and this gentleman has not shown a Christian, a, a true Christian works, yet he has a huge church, a huge church of followers. And their big thing has been, we don't talk about sin. We don't condemn people with sin. We don't even bring in the idea of sin. Well, that's something we do need to talk about sometimes. Well, last Sunday, he got on his high horse and he started condemning people who basically reached out in all honesty and we're, we're, we're like, wow, this is great. Are you, are you changing? Are you actually coming to Christ? Well, he started co to condemn everybody. He says, yes, I read, and uh, it was about, the, about reading Spurgeon, which was a great pastor of the past from, from England, from, from London, a great solid preacher. And he, he said, I read things from Ray Comfort, who's considered to be a very good individual when it comes to a pastor when it comes to, to, to sharing their faith. And he starts quoting these people and says, you know, I read this, I'm crying inside, I'm, it's hard, it's heartfelt. It looked very, very convincing. And I thought, okay, maybe he is changing. That would be great. But what I heard yesterday was this thing, we gotta just jump on the bandwagon, just accept them. Well, my position from the beginning was, we don't just accept, but we, but we also have to be wary. Because people do do lie and they do they say things sometimes for different reasons from what it appears. And the 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 message yesterday or, or Sunday was basically a chastisement to all those who say he shouldn't be with individuals that are also known heretics 
that he should change his way, that his actions need to support his statement. And he chastised everybody about that. So I just warn you, sometimes you might hear something very good from someone who does not hold to, to biblical, true biblical counsel. And they come across as very, very, um, very, very much the, the spokesperson for God. Um, I don't think I am. I'm a pastor, yes. God has made me and uh, put me in charge of being an under shepherd under him in the church I'm at. But I still, I still have to go with those in our church. Our polity system at J First Baptist is congregational. That means we all work together. We all come together. We, we, we actually do a lot of things by consensus under the, what the Bible says we should be doing. And it's just not me saying it. Now, yes, as a pastor, there are certain things I do, I am responsible for, like services and, and setting up, uh, working with staff and setting up various ministries. But I also have to be under the authority of the church. Well, you you might say, well, this was a, this was kind of a, uh, a broadcast that really didn't, I didn't even know about either, either of these two. Well, that's great. But I just want to encourage you. Just because somebody comes across as authoritative doesn't mean they're speaking biblically. And that's sad. I wish it wasn't that way. But there's a reason why this has happened. Because Satan knows if he can convince people to shift their lifestyle away from God, it might even be a good lifestyle. I mean, I'm going to tell you, Todd White talks about being great and that you're a great person and all these. That's wonderful. But if you leave out the God portion, you leave out the, the gospel portion, what are you saying? You're being a motivational speaker. That's not a preacher. Yes, as a preacher, we, we try to motivate. We try to encourage our people. But the basis is the word of God. And so I just wanted to share this with you. This, I'm going to tell you, yesterday was a tough day. In, at least in my mind. Did anything terrible happen to me? No. But it just was a, it was a tough day seeing some of these things around me and seeing how things have developed. And, and this may never affect us personally, but we need to lift up our Christian leaders before the Lord. We need to lift up our national leaders before the Lord because many of these individuals, they do touch the hearts and minds of, of others of many. In the case of Todd White, there are literally thousands of people that will follow him and that will take his word as gospel. When it comes to John MacArthur, there are there are thousands of not just lay people, but, but leaders in Christianity that follow him and that will take a lot of what he says as gospel. Um, I like what he says. I also still look to, to the word of God as the basis of what I'm believing. But even in this world we live, there are divisions, and we have to be careful. I remember, and I close with this, I remember a young lady years ago at the Holy Land Experience, and uh, she was Marbeth uh, Rosenthal. This is the wife of the founder, Marvin Rosenthal. And she said to me, because we were talking about something going on, and she says, George, she says, you be careful what you hear. And I, you know, I thought about that. I, and I remember, remember the song? Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. We have to be careful. Because those children's songs that we would sing in church many times, at least the ones I, I sang, they gave great biblical truths. Because even, even if we don't believe it at first, when we hear it, we hear it enough, guess what? We start believing it. So... Let me encourage you, keep the word of God center in your life. Be faithful in following Christ. And I do pray for all of you. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We do thank you for what you do for us. Lord, give us your wisdom. Give us your discernment as things happen around us. Because not all is good. Some is good and stands have to be made. And I lift up uh, Dr. MacArthur 
as their church made a decision to basically go against what 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 rules have been put into place in his state to me and may you uh, keep keep him centered on the word of God that this was not just a stand that I'm going to thumb my nose at the government but it was a stand of serving God over the over the government and we're encouraged us in the Bible that if the government veers that we must make a stand I think of the Christians in Pakistan who some of them stand to lose their lives even for being a Christian and then this other gentleman Lord if it just be your will touch Todd White's heart I would love to see him truly come before you and accept you as a savior and stop this heretical teaching that he does in his church. Allow him to see what's really right. And that it's just not a matter of saying a statement. But it's a matter of following it up with actions. And I know there's so much other tension around this world. Both in the political arena. And in the social arena. And in the, and in the spiritual arena. And Lord I just ask that you give us. A straight and clear path to doing it your way. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I hope that each and every one of you have a blessed day. God bless and shalom.